This guy, some great quotes from this guy, H.L. Mencken. The men the American people admire most extravagantly are the greatest liars. The men they detest most violently are those who try to tell them the truth. I want to hear the truth. hear the truth because the truth means we are responsible and therefore we have the power to change what we don't like. People don't want to feel they're responsible, they want someone else to blame so they can sit on their arse and watch EastEnders. This is Oscar Wilde, wonderful quote from Oscar Wilde. Most people are other people. Their thoughts are someone else's opinions, their lives are mimicry, their passions are quotation. In short, we are a world of repeaters, repeater politicians. I love this line, being bent over so long they think it's standing up. If we had politicians who stood by their convenience, their, 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 their conscience, who answered to their conscience only and not to um, a career massaging, yes sir, no sir, I'll vote this way even though I don't agree with it because it's good for my career politicians, then we'd have a decent parliament that represented the people. And while this is going on, Big Brother unfolds so fast. As Mencken said, the most dangerous man to any government is the man who is able to think things for out for himself. Almost inevitably he comes to the conclusion that the government he lives under is dishonest, insane and intolerable. And it is to stop that awakening that limiting the debate on Big Brother is all about. Secret Agenda, the movie. Puppet People. Follow the White Rabbit. War is peace. Get a brain, morans. <laughs> and then you can persuade people that war is peace, freedom is slavery, and ignorance is strength. And you can justify this as fighting for peace. You can say that this is bringing freedom to a people from a tyranny. No problem. Collateral damage, it says so here. But you don't want to see that. Shut up! Watch this! Watch this, hey! Hey, quick, honey! She, she, she's going for the car! <laughs> Liberated. 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 Hey! I think it's terrible that Janet Jackson, she showed her breast at the Super Bowl. I'm morally outraged. I wonder what should really morally outrage us. But we compartmentalise our minds, or so many people do, where they can't see the contradiction between worrying about someone's breast on television and some kid getting blown apart. The two sides never talk to each other, so they can't see the contradiction. Open minds. They talk to each other so they can see the contradiction. As Gandhi said, what difference does it make to the dead, the orphans and the homeless, whether the mad destruction is wrought under the name of totalitarianism or the holy name of liberty and democracy? Still the same. This depleted uranium babies in Iraq. Depleted uranium uh, all over Iraq from the weapons dropped on, 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 on uh, Iraq and that's what it's doing to children. But you don't want to see that. Hey honey, quick! It's the, it's the Jerry Springer show and he's going to hit his girlfriend. This is part of Big Brother. Uh, this is really part of Big Brother. The human body is an electrochemical organism and if you destabilize it electrically or chemically, you stop that organism working to full capacity. And part of that capacity is emotional and mental sharpness and balance and equilibrium. So the more you pour chemical and electromagnetic electrical pollution and disruptions into the electrochemical organism, the more you stop that manifesting its true potential for sharp thought and balanced emotion. When you look at the graphs for the increase in uh, the crap they put into food, chemical uh, concoctions and cocktails, overwhelmingly, though certainly not always, aimed at children. And then you look at the graph of the increase in so-called um, childhood behaviour problems. They go up like they're connected by a magnet. There is a war on our children because they're the generation they overwhelmingly have to suppress. Fluoride in the water is an excitotoxin. It excites brain cells 
destroys them and it suppresses thought. The first known time that fluoride was put into water supplies was in the Nazi concentration camps to keep the people docile. Genetically modified food is designed to genetically modify us. Vaccines, 25 vaccinations before the age of two with a growing, still developing immune system. All the stuff they give us, electromagnetic soup, the rabbit hole is seriously deep. And this is so appropriate. This was said by a pastor after the Second World War, talking about Nazi Germany. He said, first they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for the communists and I did not speak out, speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the trade unionists and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for me and by then there was no one left to speak out for me. And what they're doing is picking off different sections of society and the other sections are saying, well it doesn't affect me, not my problem. And eventually, enough sections are picked off for those that were looking the other way to be picked off also. That's how it is. Divide and rule. Not my problem. Well, it is our problem. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Martin Luther King. Absolutely it is. And what we need to do is stop making excuses. Injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere, potentially, because next time it's going to be us. And it's a house of cards, this. It's held together. The power that is used to enslave us is the power we give to the enslavers every day. They don't have power. They have our power. We give it to them. It's time to take it back. And by that, it means unity. So we might have a different religion or no religion. So we might be a Jew or a Muslim or a Christian, or we might be black or white or sky blue, bloody pink. This is not a big brother global agenda to enslave Jewish people or to enslave Islamic people or to enslave white people middle class. It's a global agenda to enslave all of us. And if we don't unite and we go on being divided and ruled, then they will enslave all of us. If we unite, get rid of the nonsense fault lines of manufactured division. And then, and then, through unity of response and non-cooperation with our own enslavement, they will not be able to do this. As Gandhi said, you must be the change you want to see in the world. We are the world. What else has created the world that we are looking at? We have, or we've allowed it to be created on our uh, uh, in our name. There is no path, path to peace. Peace is the path. We've got to stop fighting each other before we divided and ruled into total enslavement. And <laughs> Martin Luther King said this. Cowardice asks the question, is it safe? Expediency asks the question, is it politic? Vanity asks the question, is it popular? But conscience asks the question, is it right? And there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe nor politic nor popular, but one must take it because it is right. And we are there now. When someone said to me, what would change the world quicker than anyone else? I would say this, or anything else, it would change overnight if we did this, because everything would come from it. If we stopped making decisions about our actions based on what is right for us in the moment, and started doing what we knew to be right by conscience and justice, this world would transform. This world has been created as we experience it by billions of people deciding every day what do I do in the interests of me. Once we start saying what do I do in the interests of justice, fairness and my own conscience, actions change, the world changes. And we are in control of that. And we are, uh, we, we are at a fork in the road now. Because big brothers on a motorbike now. This is not the totalitarian tiptoe anymore, this is the totalitarian sprint. And we have uh, one last chance to, to open our eyes, open our minds, 
and start getting involved in doing something about this. Because you know, there's going to come a time, and it ain't too long from now, when we're going to have to look our children in the face, in the eyes, and we're going to have to answer the question without blinking and without averting them. What were you doing, Daddy, Mummy, Granddad, Grandma, when the fascist state came in that now controls every facet of our lives, including our thoughts? What were you doing when it came in? Now, for what, all my ills and all the rest of it, I won't have to blink. How many other people will be trying to look the other way? 